Okay. All right, so Anne-Marie Lafferty, and this is Petaluma Community Access Television, and I'm very excited to have co-authors today, Henry Winkler. I'm Henry. <laughs> and Lynn Oliver. That makes me good. <laughs> <laughs> and we are here to celebrate the recent release of... Alien Superstar. It was born October 1st. It came out, it is our newest, um, it is our newest book, our 35th novel. And your first project together was 2003? Yes. Okay, and how did that come about? Well, it came about, Henry likes to say he was having a lull in his career, in his acting career. And so, I don't like to say it, it's true. Oh, did I say you like to say it? Yeah. Henry is sad I'm, to say. I'm sad to say, I, was, <laughs> I cried. He was having a lull in his career. And we shared uh, the same manager, agent, because I worked in television as well. And he suggested to Henry that he write a book about his childhood in which he, he had dyslexia and had a big struggle in school. Mm. So he fixed up a lunch. We had lunch. How was the lunch? Horrible. The lunch was horrible. We had bad fish. <laughs> but True. great conversation. So the formula for writing 35 books together with someone is bad fish, good, good conversation. conversation. Absolutely. Right. Now, how does a book come to life? Is it something that you're both guided and sensing or does one have an idea and then you're brainstorming and collaborating? We wrote uh, 28 novels about Hank Zipser who is a little boy who is very resourceful, glass half full, he just spills it everywhere because <sighs> he's dyslexic. That was over and when that was over we had talked about an alien before we wrote a series of four books uh, called Ghost Buddy. Okay. Uh, so we were in that realm. And paranormal. then, yeah, the paranormal. We were in the paranormal. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Lynn and I have worked in television most of our careers. Uh, Lynn uh, producing, executive producing, writing, uh, creating, and I, uh, you know, executive produced and um, acted. And we thought, oh, children are, they love the idea of stardom, of the red carpet, of, um, you know, being in a glossy magazine. <laughs> and we thought we would put the two together um, and out popped uh, Alien Superstar. Well, it took a year and a half, so pop might not be out. What, what would be a better word than pot? Well, we worked uh, on it. We massaged it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We Massage. wrote it. Because, um, you know, it, it, when you're writing the beginning uh, of a... Uh, this will be a series of three at the moment. Okay. We have to... You have to think of the rules. What is the alien's rule on Earth? Mm -hmm. What is the alien's life up on his planet? What does, um, what does the, the, the Earthlings... Who do, what do they know? What can they know? So you have to work out all these details. Yeah. And I was going to say, is writing a book similar to writing for film? Is there a different development of characters? Well, I think one reason we're able to do this, because it's an unusual collaboration. Most novelists work singly in a room by themselves. But I came from television writing, where comedy writing, where you write in a room. And you beat out the story together with other writers, you try out lines, you see if anyone laughs. So that process of collaboration came very naturally to me and to Henry as well. When you do a, a comedy, uh, like a situational comedy, uh, you, you start Monday morning at 10 o'clock, read the script, rehearse all the way to Friday afternoon uh, at 4. Uh, but on Wednesdays is, tape, is, the, is the room where all of the writers and friends of writers come and you rewrite over bad Chinese food. <laughs> I get, you know what, it's writing for television is all bad. I mean, bad food. Bad food, yeah. yeah bad food. Well, That's good things come from bad food. <laughs> <laughs> it does. But anyway, uh, we have a, a, wonderful con um, uh, a, a wonderful collaboration. Uh, I talk and Lynn uh, types. Okay. Then uh, Lynn has a thought, and she types, and I wait. And then she reads it back to me, and then we argue over every word. Well, it sounds like a, a, a great partnership. It is. It is. It's I could never write these books. I mean, I could never be part of 
writing a book if it was not for. And how does a book start? Is it the title? Is it a character? Is it a message that you want to convey and then the pieces just come together? Well, I think underneath it all there is a message that we want to convey. And then what we write is is comedy. So it starts with an idea that has comic invention in it, that, that creates comic situations. Mm-hmm. We know when we've hit on a good idea because the ideas just flow out. When you have an idea that's not really very promising, you sit there and oh, look at each other. Like, it's painful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he could, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it really, it literally, you watch it deflate right in mm-hmm. front of you. Believe it or not, the, the character, the, uh, the underpinning, what was important to us to be the theme under the comedy was right from the very beginning. Lynn knew that um, right from the beginning that uh, culture, the need for culture, uh, for uh, a, a child's development, for society was majorly important and we cannot just let it um, float into the dust. Mm-hmm. Alien Superstar is the story of a kid who comes from another galaxy, from another planet. And the reason he flees to Earth, and the reason he flees his planet is because they deactivate when you turn turn 13, your ability to enjoy sensory things, your enjo- your ability to experience art and music and culture and literature. And this is a kid who's a rebel, who, who needs that in his life. So he flees to America. So it was really important to us to be writing at this moment in history when we're all so focused on science and technology, to be writing about what makes us human, which is the arts and music and sensory experiences. You know, also, um, the reason that uh, he picked America on the entire earth is because the only address that he and his grandma, his grandmother was the master mechanic for the Starfleet, (laughs) excuse me, on his planet. So she built the spaceship. The only address they knew was the back lot of Universal Studios. You know, I mean, who's going to question a rocket ship sitting yeah, in the middle no, of Yeah, no, absolutely not. What a, what a great place to land. Right, yes. no, I and think so. Yeah. There's, there's Stranger in a Strange Land theme, and then there's Stranger in a Really, Really, Really Strange Land, which is the back lot of a movie studio. Yeah, and then he, he has them all fooled. Is, is mm-hmm. this... Well, well they for a while, anyway. Gonna, uh, yeah, uh, dressing up as character. See, and, that that is one of the problems that we had to solve. What happens when people find out that he's not just in a costume, that he actually is an alien. Will they still accept him? Mm -hmm. Who does he let in on that truth? Mm -hmm. And I think that is true to uh, kids today and teens, is um, their identity. And and who who do I let in and and who is safe and who am I? And, you know, figuring out their role, you know, within society and family and it's, it's a tough um, place to navigate. And does the interior match the exterior, which is a real issue for kids. You know, everyone yeah. feels like they have a secret challenge. And in fact, we all do. We're, mm-hmm. n- none of us is perfect. So we all have something that we want to, that we have to negotiate. His happens to be that he's an alien with six eyes and suction cups for toes. <laughs> <laughs> but you need suction cups on his planet because there's no gravity. So they hold him down. On, on Earth, however, he can't take a step because he is mm. stuck to wherever he is. Okay. Interesting. But, the, but the book is also about the, the cost of the benefits of fame, something that Henry knows well. We like to write about what we know or starting with what we know. So we both know the process of uh, production of television, but also Henry knows more than I do what the costs and benefits of fame are. I haven't had as much as he has. But. And the most important thing, they are comedies. This is only uh, the thought around and underneath mm-hmm. that hold the comedy up. But we write so that uh, we, we hopefully are the book that children just read because they want to, yeah. not because it's assigned. Right. And I think that's how reading needs to start. For, for young readers is, is for fun and build that imagination right. and yeah. have them interact with that character and you know really think you know I, I could be them yes that's right and that's right to relate to it and to have fun with the process because you don't go back to things that are painful for you unless there's something wrong with you mm-hmm. 
And as you get older, reading does become something that uh, it is assigned, like you said, it's mm -hmm. not a re recreational, enjoyable thing. Now we're suddenly, we're tested on that content and we have to perform. That's right. So it, it's, it's you have great. To read to with the and I didn't do very well when I was tested on anything, mm -hmm. you know. So there are some children who are unlocked by the arts, who That's can it. only communicate to the world through That's the arts, arts, whatever they are. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, writing for comedy, mm -hmm. and I love some of the titles. So the curtain goes up, my pants fell down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a zombie in my bathtub. Yes. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So again, the titles are engaging. Um, you should things... talk about Molly Enchilada. Well, uh, we, there is a, a title, uh, there is an international day. Now this is another character, this is Hank Zipser, okay. the, the young boy who is uh, dyslexic. Uh, there's International Day at the school, and so his class is making enchiladas, but he's not very good at fractions. So instead of a third of a cup of chili powder, he puts uh, three cups uh, of chili powder into, and his teacher, Miss Adolph, who was actually my teacher, shoots across the multi-purpose room like she's got a rocket under her skirt. <laughs> Hence, hence the holy part. So yes. the, original the, holy the original title was... Holy Enchilada, My Teacher Has Gas. <laughs> but they wouldn't let the us put it on the Publishing company recommended strongly that we cut the My Teacher Has Gas part. The uh, teachers might object to having gas. Yes. But we work very... It's, I mean, thank you for noticing the titles. We work very hard on them. Because we feel a child is in a bookstore in a library, you have about three seconds of their attention to make them take yeah, that book and pull that one off the shelf. So we want the titles to be funny and to tell the story, but to be funny and sort of make them feel like they're welcome in the book. Well, fantastic. And you're welcome here. We are at Copperfields Books in Petaluma. And I want to thank you both for oh this my interview. Gosh, thank you. It was a wonderful um, conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Nice to see you. Okay.